able to work in my hometown and and do good things for the community and the people here. How our town Gibson City rallied around him and his family during mo the most trying times. Why they're truly an angel among us. And the downtown area gets a facelift. See how it's helping businesses grow and inviting more visitors to the area. Then we'll head to the vault on a day where the TV show American Pickers came to town. What the lucky collector had to say about the unique visitors. This is WCIA 3 News. Our town, Gibson City. Sponsored by Illinois Pork Producers. And Best Western Plus Green Mill Village Hotel and Suites Convention Center in amazing Arcola. We are celebrating Our Town 2020. This week, we're sharing stories from Gibson City and Ford County. Our town looks a little different this season, but we're still taking you to unique places and introducing you to people who call Our Town Gibson City home. We're welcoming you with a little history. Today, the city is home to a little more than 3,000 people. And as WCI 3's Karina Rubio discovered a few famous people of the past once called Our Town Gibson City home too. The, the town founder is credited as a man, Jonathan B. Lott, uh, which I know you would think, well, why is it called Gibson City? Well, Lott named the town after his wife, Margaret Gibson. The town was first founded in the 1870s and then quickly grew after that. One of the things that Jonathan Lott did was bring the railroad into town. Before he did that, basically the only way people got here was kind of old wagon trails. And if you take a stroll through downtown today, you'll see mainly brick buildings, but they used to be wooden. We actually had some uh, pretty insane, uh, crazy fires that went through and took out a good chunk of the town in 1885. The people of Gibson City never let pieces of the past like that go forgotten. The Historical Society puts on cemetery walks to bring history alive. People portray remarkable figures of the past who are buried right here in our town, Gibson City. William Brotherton, who was a World War I pilot. He actually earned the Distinguished Flying Cross before he was shot down just 10 days before the armistice. Maxine Johnson Jackson was a jazz singer. In the 30s and 40s, he actually ended up traveling the world. She's performed in, in Europe and New York. And you can't forget about Donna Erickson. Some may remember her as one of the many faces of the little sunbeam bread girl. This is a great city, great town, and we need to to be proud of it and have people come in and see what we have to offer. In our town, Gibson City, Karina Rubio, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Gibson City has seen many changes over the past eight years. That effort was spearheaded by the mayor. It started with targeting vacant storefronts in the town and the downtown revitalization committee. It included people young and old from in town and out. They worked with an engineering firm in Champaign for months. The DNR granted the city $99,000 to help with the project. It's a phased revitalization, which started with infrastructure and LED lighting. Mayor Daniel Dickey says the second part was somewhat unique. The second phase was the music system. Uh, we installed a very nice music system, high quality, and uh, that's what we look for with a lot of different features. One really neat thing about it, it's not, it's not just the music, it's we can also do local advertising. So every several songs, there's a 15 minute spot or 15 second spot where one of our local businesses actually has an advertisement or a spot on the, you know, between music. The city hasn't done the third phase because of COVID, but the plan includes flower planters, more trash receptacles, and some other finishing touches. Mayor Dickey says there will likely be future phases added, but the city doesn't borrow money. It saves for what it wants to accomplish. Small towns love their high school sports, maybe not more than the man who calls football and basketball games on the radio in our town, Gibson City. The voice of the Falcons was there for thousands of games until he wasn't. And that's when he discovered who his angels among us really are. Good morning, everybody, and welcome into FM 106.3. WGCY is the heart of Gibson City. It's family owned, uh, family operated. By Gary McCullough for 36 oh, years. That will uh, put the cork on the bottle for me this morning. Thanks and for so almost for as long, us. this tiny radio station rested on his shoulders. Uh, that's what I like best about it. Uh, able to work in my hometown and, and do good things for the community and the people here. High school sports are at the center of it all. Done well over a thousand basketball games. Hundreds and hundreds of football games. But I have to get it to the five to get a first down. The most memorable when GCMS won its first football state championship in 2017. 
He's going to throw it to the end zone. A year later, McCullough was ready for their follow-up season, but he had a heart attack. His wife and office manager, Deborah McCullough, had wondered about a moment like this. My biggest worry has always been down at this radio station. What are we going to do if something happens to Gary? We were there when Gary was back on the air three weeks later, but his heart wasn't healed. He came and did one game, had the second heart attack, and then he was done. The heart attacks led to another diagnosis. Gary had colon cancer. He tried to work, but treatments were brutal. Uh, the fatigue factor from everything, uh, I just couldn't do it. WGCY needed a new leader. The McCullough family rallied. All three of us just had to dive in. Deborah took over the business side of the station. My wife pretty much ran the whole thing, coordinated everything. Their daughter, Ashley, stepped up too. My daughter came on more as a full staff person, took over my advertising accounts, did a great job. But it was his son, Frank, who kept GCMS Sports on the air. My dad was the ultimate dad. He, uh, he, <laughs> sorry, he was my little league coach, and my, my best friend, my boss, my dad. Always had my back, always had my back. And I think the point came where it's like, now it's your turn to help him. The fact right here that they would have to punt the ball. That following football season, the defending champion Falcons went on to win another state title. This time, it was Frank behind the microphone. <laughs> And for Gary, a proud moment listening from home. It was satisfaction still on my part because my because I got to listen to my son do the championship game, and I was so happy because you just don't know if that's ever going to happen again. I mean, to be able to sit there and listen to what he did, and he did a great job. That meant a lot. It's been two years now since Gary's health interrupted his career. The forecast for today, sunny skies. We should He's be been back on the air for about a month. I'm an employee now is the way I look at it. It's a different look, different atmosphere when I left, and I will say it's one for the better. And he says his bride of 46 years is the reason he survived. It's been an adventure, it really has, but, you know, it, all, it really made us all stronger as a family. And the new summer season will begin May 3rd. Showing teamwork isn't always just on the field or on a court. It's where your heart is. And for the McCulloughs, that's at 106.3 FM. You couldn't be more indicative of what a family business is than what we have here. The McCulloughs, like so many others, are going to miss not having football in the fall. They are hoping WGCY can survive this bump in the road like they did Gary's health. You can be sure they will. Ahead in our town, Gibson City, a life-changing diagnosis for one young woman didn't stop her from achieving life goals. How her community rallied around her and her family. Also, why people can't get enough of a cool treat on a summer day in our town, Gibson City.